The top 7 admissible astronomical events to photograph in 2024. Hello, Photopilot Rafael the Bar here. 2023 has been jam packed with amazing four opportunities for with amazing astronomical events. We photographed sunrise and sunsets, full moon and supermoon, the Milky Way, star trails, solar eclipses meteor showers and many many more cool events well these are just a few photos that you guys the photopilus community have imagined planned and captured in 2023 i'll show you many more in a video in january where i reveal the best photo of 2023 the photopilus of the year and the winner of three thousand dollars but that will be in january now we're getting to 2024 and the new year is packed with amazing four opportunities including a super incredible one because we might be super lucky to live and capture a total solar eclipse and a comet so we can photograph maybe we will be able to photograph the solar eclipse and the comet at the same time there is a lot to cover in this video so let's get started let's go back to the photo pills planner here and let's check the top seven astronomical events that can be photographed in 2024 let's go the quadrant is me to shall we speak in the night that goes from January 3rd to January 4th. And around 31 meteors per hour are expected at the peak. The moon with a phase of 49% will be above the horizon at the peak, but it will be due south. And the radiant of the quadrantids is due east. So the moon can be a really nice natural light source that allows us to capture detail and texture in the foreground. You know what we say, we need to make the most of the conditions we have. And also we say plan and pray, of course. The Quadrantis is a northern hemisphere meteor shower. Unfortunately, it's not visible in the southern hemisphere. Can you imagine it? To photograph at the same time a total solar eclipse, the phase of totality, and a comet? Well, this might be possible during the total solar eclipse occurring on October 8th, 2024. Because in April, the comet 12P Pons Brooks may be visible to the naked eye. And the comet won't be that far away from the sun, from the eclipse at sun. And as you know, you don't totally like goes down. So maybe, and I'm saying just maybe the comet will be visible to the naked eye, even in daytime, because you know of the darkness produced by the phase of totality of the total solar eclipse, which is amazing. So why not? If the comet is there and the solar eclipse is there, why not to photograph both of them? Well, where should you go to uh, photograph the solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse and the comet? Well, let's go to the Fulpils map and let's check the path of totality, where the path of totality is. And the path of totality is this dark band here that you see on the map. And here in the path of totality is where you can photograph the totality, the total solar eclipse phase. Outside this band here, you can photograph the partial eclipse within these yellow lines and outside the yellow lines there is no eclipse visible so if you want to photograph the total solar eclipse you need to go to Canada, USA and also in Mexico it's where the path of totality is going through here in the Flopils team we're working on a Flopils expedition with Rachel Jones to photograph the total solar eclipse and the comet, the Aurora Borealis and the Milky Way, we are lucky with clouds and the only place that's possible where you can photograph the eclipse, the aurora and the uh, uh, Milky Way is here in Canada. So stay tuned. As always, we'll announce uh, the expedition through our newsletter. So I invite you to subscribe to the newsletter. You want to join one of our adventures. And in particular, this one is gonna be a real challenge, you know? We're pretty crazy going to Canada where it's mostly cloudy but you know guys the only place you can photograph the total solar eclipse the aurora and uh, and the milky way in the same week so we'll go there and give it a try are you in well join the newsletter i can leave a link to the newsletter in the description of this video and in the first column below subscribe 
The Sun is in the period of solar maximum, which means that we will be more likely to see and photograph the Aurora Borealis and the Aurora Australis. And solar maximum occurs on average every 11 years. So you're lucky enough to live in the Canadian Rockies, in Sweden, in Iceland, in Greenland, in the Faroe Islands, in Norway. You know that from January till April and from September till December, you can photograph the Aurora Borealis if the, of course, the aurora is active and there are no clouds. Actually, we prepared quite a few expeditions to photograph the aurora in Norway and Canada. And yes, if you're planning well and you're lucky, you can photograph the aurora borealis with the Milky Way, like Julio did in this image. When should you photograph the auroras? Well, you can photograph them when the aurora is active, and when the sky is clear and in any moon phase. But usually you want to photograph it around new moon. But having a little bit of moon, it can be interesting to add detail and capture detail in the foreground. You know, the moon is a natural light source that helps us correctly expose the foreground, and it's super interesting to have the moon over the horizon when the aurora is dying, as dancing in the sky. And by the way, we still learn how to plan and photograph the aurora borealis. I invite you to watch this amazing masterclass by Rachel John Ross. Don't miss it. As you probably know, the Milky Way and the Galactic Center are visible from February till the uh, end of October on both hemispheres. But from November till the end of February, you can also photograph the Milky Way, but the thin part of the Milky Way, not the core, not the Galactic Center. But still, it is amazing to photograph it, so I invite you to give it a try, because you'll be amazed by the great results you'll get. Okay, what's gonna happen with the Milky Way next year if we have a look on? The Northern Hemisphere had the red pin here in Menorca. You know that in January it's not visible, the Galactic Center is not visible, but you can photograph the Milky Way. It's coming it's completely vertical like this, the thin part of the Milky Way, but, and when it's very low. What I usually do when I plan the Milky Way is I tap the uh, Milky Way icon on the top panel here to jump to the next new moon, and I check what's going on on the red pin position. And here in February, actually on 11th of February, we start to get the galactic center, which is the largest dot on the Milky Way arch. That's represented with this dotted arch you see on the map. The galactic center is the largest dot on the map. And actually, here in the northern hemisphere, you can start to photograph it when it's very low in the sky in the southeast directions. Actually, if I tap on the night here, I'll be able to visualize the position of the galactic center, and here we have it, the horizon, and the galactic center is here, very, very low for a nice, beautiful diagonal. Very cool. Let's see what happens in March. Well, in March, you can get the galactic center also in the southwest, great panel, yeah, great shot for a panel, and this occurs until more or less July, it's when you start getting the Milky Way straight in the southwest direction, so you can get the Milky Way completely vertical. Let's tap on the night AR again and see where the Milky Way is. So it's completely, completely vertical. Awesome. And if you go towards the end of the year, October, yeah, then you can also capture the Milky Way completely vertical. So in the northern hemisphere, the beginning of the Milky Way season or Milky Way galactic center season, you can capture Milky Way when it's low in the sky with the core in the southeast directions. And as the year goes by, you get the Milky Way more and more vertical until the end of the year when you get the Milky Way completely vertical in the southwest directions. And this starts around July. Very cool. So, depending on the idea you have of the photo, you uh, choose the uh, day that can give you the position of the Milky Way you need. Now, let's go to the South Hemisphere. Let's check, for example, Namibia. Hope, hope, hope. Namibia here. And let's set the date to, again, uh, January. January, January here to check the position of the Milky Way throughout the year. So in January, in Namibia, Southern Hemisphere, there is no galactic center. You can photograph it when it's low in the sky and completely vertical too, but only the tail. So let's go to February. In February, again, you start getting the galactic center in the southwest, southeast directions. Pretty cool. And if I jump to, let's say, April. In April, wow, you get the Milky Way when it's low in the sky with the galactic center. Look how high in the sky is the galactic center. It's super, super high here in the southern hemisphere. Let's tap on the night AR and 
Have a look at it. Look, the core of the Milky Way is very high in the sky, much higher than in the Northern Hemisphere, which is amazing. So, the good thing about the Southern Hemisphere is that you can capture the Milky Way when it's low in the sky and completely vertical almost every month throughout the year. Let's see what happens in July. In July, yep, you can get the Milky Way completely vertical and also super low in the sky, but in towards the east in this case, towards the east. Let's check the AR again, night AR again, to visualize the shot. Okay. You need to imagine that you are at the ripping position. That's very cool. Yeah, what a great shot this one here with the core up in the sky. And in October, well, in October you can get the McCoy not vertical, but beautiful diagonals and very low in the sky with the core super high in the sky. You know, Milky Way all the way around is interesting from both hemispheres, so I invite you to give it a try and photograph them in many different compositions and many different situations. And by the way, if you wish to learn how to plan your Milky Way shots step by step, watch this video. The first is Mitty Shaw with Speaking on the Night that goes from August 11th to August 12th or from August 12th to August 13th, depending on where you are on Earth depending on your time zone. But of course, you can use photo pills to check the exact date and time for your local position, for your local uh, date and time, or for any other location on Earth you wish to check it out. The good news is that the Moon with a 45% phase will be below the horizon throughout the night, allowing, uh, allowing us to enjoy the show. Also, the good news is that the Perseids, as you know, are visible from both hemispheres, the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. And as I change the time here, the gray circle that you see moving uh, on the map is telling me the position of the radiant at all time. And as you know, the radiant point of a meteor shower is that spot in the sky where meteors appear to originate. And some people like to frame the radiant and some people like to frame away from the radiant to capture longer meteors. So knowing where the radiant is at all time is super important. You can check it out on the map and use it up on the 90R you'll visualize the radiant of the Perseus Mitty Shower on the AR and you, if you swipe on the screen you can change the time and see how the radiant moves across the sky. You can miss it actually. And if you used to learn how to plan your Mitty Shower shots, your, your Perseus shots, watch this video. On September 18th there is a full moon and depending on where you are on Earth, there is a partial lunar eclipse. It's when the Umbra, the strongest shadow of the Earth, falls on some parts of the Moon. Where do you have to go to photograph the partial eclipse? Easy! According to Photopills, oh well, the partial phase of the eclipse will be visible from, you know, Eastern Europe, Europe, Africa, South America and North America, and it won't be visible in um, New Zealand, Australia, Oceania, China, and Japan. Super, super easy to find the spots. For example, here in Minorca, yeah, we have the eclipse visible and I have the eclipse phase times on the top panel, so I cannot miss it. Also, on the map, you have the direction of the eclipse, this line that moves when I change the time. On the top panel, you have the face of the eclipse, how it evolves. You see the picture that's moving. Uh, the shadow of Earth will follow, fall on a small part of the Moon this time. And if you want to locate the eclipse in the sky, you can always tap on the AR button and visualize where the Moon is going to be. Where are you? Moon, 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 here we are. There will be the lunar eclipse. Easy! Take advantage of the Humanitarian views. They are amazing to visualize information through the phone and on the reality. So you I better, so you have a better understand on the photo you're trying to plan. And for those of you that won't be able to photograph the lunar eclipse, well, you have the full moon. As you know, the full moon has something super special because it allows us to create really compelling images, amazing photographs, using the moon as an important subject in the photo. And by the way, if you wish to learn how to plan your uh, lunar eclipse and your moon shots, why this video? On October 2nd, during the new moon, there will be an annular solar eclipse. And I love the annular solar eclipses, I really enjoy the one in 2023. We actually put a Philippines expedition to the southwest US 
to a photography with a bunch of crazy photo pillars and we had so much fun. And if you wish to photograph the characteristic of ring of fire around the moon, you need to be in the path of totality. Well, it's not the path of totality, actually, it's the path of annularity. In this case, it's also represented on the photo pillars map here by, the, by this dark band here. And it's pretty cool because uh, a few interesting places here, you know, Easter Island is within the path of totality of uh, annularity of the annular solar eclipse, then crosses uh, Chile and Argentina. It's pretty cool. And outside the, pa the path of, of annularity, you can photograph the, annular, uh, the partial eclipse, and within these yellow lines and outside these lines, where, where, well, 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 no eclipse is visible. Also, for the red pin position, the top panel is telling me the times of each phase of the eclipse. And on the map, for example, if I tap on the maximum on the map, I have the thin blue line that's telling me where the eclipse is happening. You know, when I'm changing the time, the sun moves and the moon moves until yeah, annularity occurs. And this line is telling me where the eclipse will occur. And you can also tap on the AR button here and visualize the position of the moon and the sun. And there you'll have the clips. You can locate the clips through the phone yeah, when you plan your shot. Nice, nice, nice. And if you saw how to plan your annular solar clip shot, watch this video. 2024 has two super moons. The first one will be on September 17th or September 18th, depending on where you are on Earth, depending on your time zone. And the second one will be on October 17th. The moon will be a little bit closer to Earth and it will appear a bit larger. To be more precise, 7.5% larger than usual. So, based on the super moon rise and set directions, plan your super moon shot. Like I've done here, for instance, in New York, in Manhattan, even on uh, September 17th, 2024, at 7.40 p.m., I am at the red pin position. Well, I'll be able to photograph a moon aligned with the top of the Empire State Building. You also see the size of the moon on the map, and you have the size in brackets on the top panel, it's 32 meters, which is a pretty cool moon. And natural light, the sun elevation is minus. 8.36, which is nautical twilight, so it's gonna be uh, dark, but because of the building, the body states is lit at night, well, I'll be able to expose, correctly expose in one single exposure, both my building, my subject, the body states, and the moon, the super moon in this case. And by the way, if you still learn how to play your super moon shots, why is this video? Well, these are 7 plus 1 amazing events to photograph in 2024. If you know any other cool event, please let us know in the comments, leave a comment below. And now, if you wish to learn how to plan and photograph all the events I've shared in this video, I invite you to study well and download our super detailed astronomical events photography guide. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download it. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye, and happy new year! Happy 2024! Let's go!